welcome back to this live stream series so i know i'm doing it pretty inconsistently but um yeah i found something really cool over oh, after the end of the stream yesterday i figured out that apparently we can actually have firebase as a emulator on our local machine so we don't really even need to worry about setting it up like on firebase's console right now so what we can do is we can actually just go ahead and develop the app and just have everything running locally and it'll still be perfectly fine so that's pretty much what we're going to be doing today and if we want to cover anything else so this is what i thought about and uh, let me know what you guys are thinking about it so basically what i thought is that for the directory and everything for our application that we're going to consider fit tracker as our main hub and then we'll have our expo app fit tracker and then we'll have a new folder that's going to be specifically for the Firebase functions and the back end and everything, so I'll call it like Firebase. It's called Fit Tracker Firebase uh, and Backend. And we're just going to be building pretty much off of there. I thought that'd be a pretty good uh, way to do it. Hey man, how's it going? So. Let me open up my browser. So there's a thing called Firebase Emulator. And I was actually just looking this up yesterday. Basically what it does is that you can have pretty much all of these things running off of your local device. And that's pretty much it. So that's what I figured that we could do. Um, as opposed to actually having to set it up on an actual uh, Firebase console and worrying about like if the keys get lost or whatever. We can set it up locally and then pretty much just develop the application through that there. So that's pretty much the gist of it. And also I really didn't want to give any sort of uh, <laughs> billing information to Firebase just yet. I wanted to hold off on that as long as I possibly could. So I searched up the uh, Firebase local emulator and one of the documentation and then on here we can see their getting started guide and if we scroll a little bit lower it's going to tell us that we can install their cli so that's pretty much what we're going to do so we're going to go ahead and install the cli i'm going to install it for mac os using npm so i'm going to install fire tools open up my terminal And then right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that command npm install dash g fire tools and let that just work its magic in the background. And after that, we just have to log in and test the CLI. Yeah, that should be pretty simple. Cool. And just FYI, I've also gotten the uh, chat GPT similar uh, instructions happening on the back end right here. So while that's happening, let's let's just talk about quickly what we did last time. Um, so basically, what happened was last time that I wanted to figure out how to get this app to run on iOS. I got it to run on iOS. However, the thing that was happening was that uh, the reason it wasn't working is I actually had like four system updates or no, like three or two system updates that I had to do, which was like it required 20 extra gigabytes on my computer, which it just didn't have. So I had to delete a lot of stuff. And then I installed everything. Computer's a little bit better. I like the new update and everything, but I really, really, really hate developing for iOS. Well, at least, um, yeah, I just really don't like it because it's just so like uh, closed. You need a Mac device to be able to do it. You need, um, you gotta install Xcode, you gotta install every single device emulator for iOS to be able to run anything. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of it. Unlike with Android Studio, you know, you can run it on whatever you want. Um, but basically I got it to work and then if I press on I and then I can open it up in iOS right here, eventually it'll open up. We also uh, created our splash screen by the way. So this is our, no, it's really quick, but that was our splash screen right there. Well, let's see how far we are into this. Well, I guess it's still downloading. 
probably gonna take its sweet time with that. While that's happening, let's quickly talk about the Figma that uh, that we had that we're developing through. Let me just go ahead and open it up real quick. Oh, cool, it's done downloading. Oh, awesome. All right, so what does the next step say? So we gotta, we got to, we got to, we got to, we gotta do Firebase login. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna move my browser to the other side just in case so no information that doesn't need to be shown gets shown. Uh, Firebase, an option, request CLI. Yeah, sure. I'm cool with that. So basically on the right side here, it's asking me to log in with Google. Um, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And then allow. Cool, so now we're authenticated. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Cool, so now we're authenticated, we're connected to their CLI and everything. Uh, what I wanna do now, what I wanna do now is I wanna initialize a project. So let's go ahead and do that. So it says your Firebase init is what we gotta do. So let me do cd dot dot uh, ls. Okay, let's go to cd fit tracker Firebase. So we're in the back end now. So we're in uh, we're in this folder right here. And inside of that folder, let's do this. Let's do Firebase init. And what is this thing saying? Uh, which Firebase features do you want to set up? Uh, Real-time database configure. Real-time database configure a security role file for a real-time database option with provision. Uh, genuinely, I have no idea which one of these options to choose from. I've never done this before, so let's see here. What can we do? Do they just repeat? I think they repeat, right? Okay. So configure security rules, indexes, configure a cloud function directory in his files, configure GitHub action deploy. I have absolutely no idea. Let's 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 ask it. Let's ask ChatGPT what we can do. Because I'm I'm genuinely not even sure. Let's copy all of these. And let's just put it here. And you know what? I'm gonna ask it, uh, what should I select? Because see, I know that we want uh, Firebase, whatchamacallit, we want Firebase uh, database, we want cloud functions, but I'm not sure if we can configure all of them. So for your use cases, since you're interested in Firebase database and Firebase functions, we should definitely go for this. Mm hmm. I see. I also want to include authentication and everything. Uh, does this include auth? Let's see what that says. So Firebase auth can also be emulated locally. It's usually bundled under the emulators option. Once you select emulators, you'll be given the option. You'll be given the choice to specify which services you want to run locally, and Firebase auth should be among them. Okay, so if you want to select emulators, you'll be able to include auth as one of your services. Okay, cool, perfect. So we want to select emulators. You want to check. You want to select storage. Whoops. Let's try that again. So we gotta do spacebar. Oh, it actually just says up here. So to set up this directory, press space bar to select. Okay, so let's do this. We wanna get storage, emulators, and real-time database. So let's do real-time database, storage, and emulators. There we go. I guess that's it. And then let's go ahead and select it. And then let's see what else. Let's see what else it says after that. Let's see what the documentation says. Your project will now be deployed and everything. So I mean, we're creating a new project. Uh, let's do that. Yeah, let's let's create a new project. If you want to create a new project in Google Cloud Organization or folder, please use Firebase. Uh, okay. 
don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. Let's see. Let me control C this. Go here, and then so we want real time database. Whoops. Spacebar. So we want real time database. We want functions. We want storage, and we want emulators. I'm gonna include functions that are just in case. And Firestore. Frameworks. I don't think we need anything else. Yeah, that should be good. And then let's go ahead and copy this and just put it in ChatGPT and see what it says. My thought is that I think we should just create a new project. Um, Then either way, you'll be able to run. Okay, cool. So then let's just go ahead and create a new project. Um, I don't know, test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sure. What do you want to call this project? Let's call it Fit Tracker Local. Uh, failed to create a project because that already exists. Okay. Let me try something out here. Let's retry this out. So if I just init, and then we need real-time database, Firestore, functions, storage, and emulators. Google Cloud Storage. Mm. Yeah, let's go ahead and give that a try. Create a new project. You know what? I'm gonna just move this to the side a little bit, and then just enter my um, ID and everything. So. Let's see what I can call it. Okay. So I think it's creating it locally. I'm genuinely not sure, but I think it is. Um, adding Firebase resources to Google Cloud Platform. Okay, so we have that whole thing. Let me let me move this up here a little bit. Okay, so basically what I did was I um, I ran everything and then I gave it the ID and the project ID and everything. Um, and it looks like it's building. I'm gonna move it away to the side a little bit and see if it's done. So now it's asking if we want to set that up. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I want to just double check something in the Firebase console. Oh, so it did create it. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's not that's not what we want. Let's see here. Oh. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and set that up. And then okay, close this all. And then what I'm doing is I'm just going to shut these down because they're not as local as I thought that they would be. So I'm going to delete all these projects because this I don't think this is the right way to do it. So let's try this out again. Delete this. Nope, don't delete that one. Uh, okay clear everything let's let's try this out again because we want to make sure that it doesn't include all, any of the things that we don't need um, hmm So basically, I'm just trying to find a way to prevent like any of the stuff that API keys from getting leaked. You know what? Screw it. I think it should be fine. Let's just let's just try it out. Shouldn't be an issue. All right. Let's go ahead and initialize a project. 
And then let's select real time database. Yeah, goddamn. All right, let's select real time database and then let's select storage and emulators. Yeah, cool. And then create a new project. Specify a project ID. Yeah, they should be fine outside here. Before I do do that, actually, I want to check something out really quickly. Um, because no, it's not this one. It's this one right here. Connect forest to emulator. This is what we want. Yeah. So before we get to make sure you understand overall, I don't know anything about that at all. Cloud Fire Store. Like I was really hoping that it'd be pretty simple that I could just easily just select everything I need and just create it locally. But I guess that's not the case, maybe. Um, and then install the configuration like this. Choose a firebase project. Change the practice. Use one of your project. Uh huh. Okay, you know, let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. Whatever. So I'm gonna call it uh, Flutter uh, Bit Tracker Local One Two Three Bit Tracker Local. Oh, uh, whoops, I already created that earlier. Okay, let's try creating a different one then. Yeah, let's just do it over here on the side. So what I'll do is real-time database, and then we'll do storage, emulators, press enter, uh, using this project, we got that, and then let's set that up. Let's go with that. Um, so basically what I'm doing right now is off screen. I'm just setting up the security rules and everything for the database. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, should be fine. My God, why is it so complicated? So now I'm saying that I need to select location for my project. Okay, let's let's try let's try something let's try something new out here. Okay, I want to create a Firebase local emulator suite that will locally run my stuff before doing anything in production. Give me all the steps to set it up, please. You gotta say pleat because eventually they're gonna become our overlooks and everything. All right, all right, man. So you're setting up Firebase local emulator. It's Google call. Let's test out everything. All right, so we have that. We've done that. Doing this now. All right. I need help with step four. Give me all the things that I need to do. Let's do that. Because step four is really the area that I'm getting stuck at. It's just like the actual setup of the thing. So. <laughs> All right, so when you run Firebase in it, you'll see a series of prompts from them ask you to set up the Firebase CLI features you'd like to set up for the project. You'll be given multiple options, okay? 
After you select emulators, you will be asked for another prompt. Would you like to select? Okay. Uh, you'll be asked to see which ports to use. Okay, you know what? Let's give that part a try then. Sure. So fire is in it. And then emulators. Let's do that. Uh, put an existing project. Sure. Let's go with this one. Oh, that's how you do it. Okay, so we want authentication functions as far as our database. Not hosting, not need that, don't need that. Let's do storage as well. Which port? It'll probably be better to do a different one. I really, I, I, I gotta remember these ones. Let me, let me just do that one. And then which port do you want the Firestore emulator to be? 8080. Might as well. Database, 9,000. I like it. This one, sure. Uh, yeah, I want the UI. And which port do you want to use for the... Yeah, just use any port. Yes, let's download the port. Let's download the emulator right now. This is honestly really cool. So that's, only, that's all I really need to do. So the CLI was asking me for a bunch of information. It's telling me that I could um, which I'm gonna call it. I could set up all the stuff that I needed, like the. Where is it? Like, I can set up using the CLI, like the database, the functions, and everything. However, the the emulator option was the one that I wanted to select because that's the emulator, like the local one. And then I could select like which emulators do I want to use. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. So then after this, what we have to do is we just do Firebase emulators and then colon start. Then then it should start. I like it, I like it a lot. So starting emulators function is Firebase. Okay, the functions emulator is configured. Uh, can I start the storage emulator without rules specified in the Firebase JS? Run Firebase in it. I don't even know what that means. Let's let's see what let's see what we got here with this one. So I'm just gonna throw that one into ChatGPT and see what it gives us. It makes really makes your life a lot easier instead of having to like go through the documentation, which you should do. You can just easily check exactly what you need to do. Okay. So option one run Firebase in it. Select Firebase CLI. Select storage. And store rules. Okay, so that's what we gotta do. Okay, let's do that then. So Firebase init, and then let's do select storage. And so now we need to set up locations. Uh, okay. So we have Okay. I guess that's what we gotta do. We gotta go to the Firebase console, like the actual console itself and set everything up in there. So we'll refresh this and then we should see this one, I think. Yep. And then we gotta go into the Fire build, fire store, and then no, it should be real time database. Yeah, real time database. I think that's what we want. Oh, dude, I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. Database location is that. Uh. Well, I mean, we have the database location. It's already showing it's in the US. Cloud resource location is not set for this project, but the operation we're attempting requires it. All right, let's.
So basically right now I'm just looking up like if I really need if I really need Firebase storage right now or not. Um You know, let's see if we can just go without it. Can we move storage? So basically I'm just asking if we can like get rid of storage if we don't need it right now. Uh, so remove it from the Firebase.json file. Okay. So Firebase.json and then Fire Store. Damn, we should really set it up though, I think. Alright, let's 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 set it up. Uh yeah, okay, let's set it up. Uh So just go to this documentation and then set a location of one of these services that is cloud storage from the Azure set location of I'm sure you said you can't change it. Okay. Yeah, that should be fine. If you open it up right now. But how do I set it up so that I'm wondering? Wait, this is what I'm thinking. Hang on. Can't I run storage local? See the, the issue that I'm running into right now is the fact that so we set up our Firebase um, emulator online. Oh, hey Mark. Yeah, that was a that was a video that I made a long time ago. Yeah, man. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that, that video popped up for you. I hope that you enjoy it. It's honestly a really cool project. I really enjoyed making it. There's a lot of creativity with the API and everything. It was fantastic. Um, so basically the thing is, is that we gotta set the location now. Okay, let's set the location and then, you know what, then we'll be running everything locally. That's, that's my assumption. So far, so far it hasn't been completely wrong. Uh, so let's go to the Firebase console. So we're here, and then how do we navigate there? Follow the initialization prompt. See, that's what we've already done. Rules, backups, usage, uh, extensions. Is that what we need? But I don't think it's extensions. Hmm. Let's look it up on Google, might as well. This is, might as well look it up on Google and see what we get. Okay. Oh, okay, so I have to go to the settings and set everything up. Okay, all right, I'm gonna just do that off screen. So basically, I'll just like talk through what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go into my project settings and then under where it says GCP resource location is where I'm going to set the location. Honestly, I don't really know which one to select. So I'll go with the multi-region one, it seems safe. OK, 
Okay, so I have saved and set that up. But I want to make sure that the project number and everything don't get exploited. So I've set up the location, which is perfect. I think that's that's what all we need to do. And so now if I, so we have that. And now if I run, I think Firebase emulator start, is that what we need to do? Is that it, did that work? Hey, it worked, okay, cool. So, uh, damn, can I start? Firebase storage emulator without that file. Okay, let's let's set that up. So what I'm gonna do is off screen, really quickly. I'm gonna type Firebase in it, and then I'm gonna go into the storage, select that, to find the storage, storage our rules. We want to make sure that that does not get saved to GitHub. That's the important thing. Oh, okay, so it doesn't. Okay, cool. Uh, let me close this clear everything all righty now we're back so okay 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 oh that's the one thing I don't want to show so here's what I'll do uh, misty this let's do firebase emulators and then start cannot find that emulators emulators not emulator. It's always the little typos that get you. It's always the little typos, man. Uh, okay. So here's all of our code. Let's see what actually gets pushed to GitHub. And here's our Firebase emulator. Oh, wait, hang on. So we have Firebase source, git ignore, rules, JS. Oh, okay, so it's safe to show the rules. Okay, that should be fine then. Kill, 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 kill. So now if I open up this URL, ideally I should see, oh, I do see it, I see it, I see it. Okay. So this is our um, Firebase emulator suite running locally. So basically now we've set up Firebase locally. Uh, this is a local environment. Can I use that too? Oh, wow. Okay. I need to remember to delete this as soon as it's done. Um, I'm just going to check something really quickly. Okay, cool. So I'm on a free plan right now still. Okay. All right. We're good. We're good. I just wanted to double check something because I thought that, um, I thought that I was not on the free plan anymore. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so here's what I want to try to do now. Um, so we have authentication here. Oh, extensions. Don't know what that means. Firestore, okay, so that's our database, that's our real-time database, this is our storage right here, these are our logs, okay, I like it, I like it, and we have functions too, we also have functions, that's fantastic, how do I access the functions, how do I connect this thing to my app, we gotta connect this thing to our app, uh, fail to initialize, see above, why did it fail to initialize the functions, Function emulator is configured, but there's no function source yet. Have you ran this? Okay, let's run that. Let's see what happens. Oh wait, I wanna. I gotta do that real quick. Okay. Mm hmm. First, I associate this project. I don't. I don't even know what happened. Wait, did I? I ran it earlier here. Did something. Firebase emulator, database emulator. 
and then do you want to do that? Sure, let's do that. Uh, sure, yeah, let's go with that too. I don't really know what this does, but I'm trusting that it works. See what I think it's doing. No, I don't even know what I think it's doing. I don't, I don't even know. We can ask ChatGPT later if we need. Okay, so now we've initialized functions, I think. So let's, let's try running and let her start again and see what happens. Now start port taken. Uh, okay, let's do this. Let's clear this out. Let's create a new terminal. Actually, you know what? I'm going to create a brand new terminal. There we go. And let's do Firebase emulators and then start. I think that's what we need. I think. Uh, oh right, we gotta go into our fit tracker Firebase backend, and then we can run it. Now it should work. No, it doesn't work. Port eighty eighty is not open on localhost. Could not start the emulator. Why is it not? Dude, that's so weird. Firebase has JSON on file. Uh, no idea what this means. Let me. Let me look this up, see what this means. Because, I mean, we already shut our emulator down. I think this might have something to do with the fact that we have functions and, oh yeah, we have functions and everything running at the same place. But, I'm gonna try, mm hmm, let's do this, let's do 8081. And then, now let's try it out. Still no bueno, okay. Oops, I dropped something. Uh, so port 8080 is not open on localhost. Okay, let's provide, let's provide this. Let's do this and let's just see what happens. So basically what I'm doing is in ChatGPT, I'm just providing exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, I feel like, I feel, I feel like it has something to do with internal report persist. Since you, it's likely something else is running kill Curious kill? No. So try changing this to that. Okay. Well, we'll also change this and also kill the port as well. So change this to that. And then add a comma. And let's run this command. So apparently this command kills port 8080. Clear. Now let's retry it. Does it work? No, it does not. Why are you not working? What do you want from my life? Oh, wait, I gotta save it. Okay. Uh, let's try it again. Still nothing. Okay. Let's clear it. And let's just go to sleep. No, we gotta figure this out. I gotta figure this out. I really want, I really, really want to make it work before I go to sleep. Or before I eat dinner or something. It's like freaking like. Midnight, like 4 a.m. It's not really 4 a.m. I just wanted to like not prove where I am. Um, okay, so we run this command, which lists everything there, and then we run this command to kill it. No, that yeah, that wasn't even a thing. So the PID or the social replacer, the PID number of the process you're trying to kill. Uh, in your case, that's 790? 790, what? We should go port 8080. I don't even, 790. Okay, let's give it a try. So I killed that and now let's try to run it. Still nothing. Damn. What are you doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Okay, you know what? Let's just specify a different port. Screw it. Let's just do that. I'm just gonna take this. Uh, let's specify a different port. Who 
this was what they generated for it. Just, I mean, we, we did buy it. Okay, let's try this out. Let's close this. Close this too. Let's reopen the terminal brand new. So CD fit tracker Firebase. And let's do uh, what's it called Firebase emulators start. Here we go. That's so weird, dude. I don't. I, I guess I need to restart the emulator again. No idea why. But okay. So now we have set up Firebase functions. We set up Firebase itself locally, the emulator. So we can see that we have authentication, we have Firebase functions, Firestore, database storage, we have everything that we need. Perfect. And now, let's go into the UI as well. So this is our UI that I was talking about earlier. We still don't see anything for functions, is this it? Hmm, all right. Okay, so now we've connected to Firebase, our emulator suite. Let's go ahead and actually connect our app to, well, no. You know what we should do? Yeah, we should do something else. We should create our GraphQL backend. Yeah, we gotta do that, okay. Because I'm a little bit lazy. Great, it all works. Now let's create now GraphQL Apollo backend and connect the app to the backend and to our um, emulate, I think. Yeah, let's give that a try. Okay, so here's what we gotta do. We gotta create a GraphQL Apollo server, and then. This would technically initialize everything. Okay. Which I'm curious. Save to show my Firestore project ID. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Service account. Do I have a service account? I don't think I have a service account at all. Yeah, okay, so we should be fine. Okay, so let me do that then. Let's just start from the beginning. So navigate to the project, project directory you want your Apollo server to live in. So you know what I'll do is inside of my Firebase functions right here, I will create a new folder. Let's, let's create a new folder inside of here. Let's call it uh, Fit Tracker Backend. That should be fine. Because this is called, what is this called? This is called Firebase and Backend. Yeah, you know what? I don't like this being inside of here. Let's put this there. Move that there. And let's rename this to just Firebase. And this will be our backend. Okay. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do that. We're going to stick to that. And let's also push what we have so far to GitHub. Uh, set up Firebase emulator with everything. Everything. There we go. Push that bad boy. Yeah, sorry about that. All right, so now let's yeah, let's set up our GraphQL Apollo server and everything. Uh, yeah, and then by the end of it, we should be able to connect to it. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's give that a try. So the first step here, let me move this here. So the first step here is so that we need to initialize npm in the project directory. And then install Apollo and GraphQL. And then for the index file, this is where our type definitions are going to go, resolvers. Honestly, I haven't worked with Apollo for a while, so I guess this is going to be a 
basic setup and everything. Yeah, let's give it a try. It seems pretty quick. Famous last words. Famous, famous last words. All right. So let's do that. I'm going to move this to the side a little bit. And let's shrinky dink this a bit. Yeah, that should be good. All right. So I'll create a terminal and then I'll do CD fit tracker backend. And let's do npm init dash y. Okay, cool. And then let's do npm install uh, Apollo dash server GraphQL. See, I was considering going with, I think, what is it called? Planet scale or Prisma? I was considering going with Prisma, but let's search for GraphQL on this one. Uh, Create index.js file. Okay, so inside of our backend, we're going to create our index.js file. Yeah. All right, let's give her a try. So, new file, and then let me expand this too. There we go. New file, and then let's call it index.js. Cool. And this is a basic index.js file so this is going to get us started i guess so requiring apollo server and gql gql what is gql again what is gql and graphql uh, javascript template literal tag that parses graphql queries in an abstract syntax tree no idea what that means uh, what is GQL in GraphQL ELI 5? So ELI 5 basically means explain like I'm 5 years old. Alright, so you know when you talk to a waiter at a restaurant, you have to use specific words to get exactly what you want, right? Like, I want to get a burger, medium rare, no onions. In the tech world, GraphQL is kind of like a waiter. Like GraphQL, oh, GQL, Graph Query Language. GraphQL query language is the specific way you ask for what you want. So instead of getting a full plate of data with stuff you didn't ask for, looking at REST APIs, <laughs> uh, you tell GraphQL exactly what you want and how you want it. Using GQL, it's like saying, just the burger and fries, please. That's exactly what you get. No extra pickles or coles. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, so you specify exactly what you want and you get nothing more, nothing less. I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it. All right. That was actually a really good explanation, dude. I, that, that, I, I, I understood that fully. So let's save this, and then let's do node index.js. So now our server is running on localhost 4000. No, no, we do not want it running on 4000. We don't want it running on 4000. 4000 is our... Is our... Um, Firebase emulator suite. 4000 is our Firebase emulator suite. Let's see how we can change it actually. Is it. Where do we change it? Where do we change it? Where do we change it? Index. Is it just default? Um. Uh, Oh wait, wait, it said console log, so let's go into the console. And then, no, we don't see it there. Refresh, no, no, we don't see it there. Uh, let's switch the port for our GraphQL to like 1001, should be good. Okay, so where is the server.listen URL? Where the hell's the URL? Oh, so this is a parameter. What the hell? What am I doing? Oh, listen. Oh, yeah, okay. That's where it is. It's like you do the most basic things, like with setting up node and everything, and then you just forget everything. And then you gotta go back and Google the most basic things. It's like the equivalent of learning how to center a div and everything. So let's call this 4001. Let's close this, rerun it, and we have it. There we go. Okay, so. Query your server. Man, it's been so long since so I've done this. I guess that's what we're doing. 
cool. Let me zoom in a hell of a lot more. Sample query, run a sample query. Don't know what this means. Don't know at all what I'm looking at, but we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn as we go on. All right, so now we set up our Apollo server. Next, let's go ahead and connect our Expo app to our Apollo server. So I'm gonna go to my Fit Tracker. Do I have it running? Let's also get that running too. So I'm gonna create a new terminal. Go to Fit Tracker. There we go. And what is our main file again? It was layout.tsx. Yeah, yes, this is it right here. Okay. So we're considering layout.tsx as our main hub for our code and everything. So what I'll do is inside of my fit tracker, I'm going to run npm install at Apollo slash client and then GraphQL. It should help us at least connect to our Apollo client, Apollo server, Apollo GraphQL server. All right. So at the very top here, I want to do some imports. So let's do import Apollo. Apollo. It's not installed. Did I install in the wrong thing? Unless, nope, we're in the right thing. Uh, let's try doing import Apollo client in memory cache Apollo provider from at Apollo client. Do we have these things? Oh, we do have this thing. Okay, perfect. Okay, it's perfect. It's installed. Just like we need it. All right, and then what we do is outside of here, underneath here, let's go ahead and add const client is equal to new Apollo client. I'm assuming, let's call this split admin one. I think we changed it to split admin one. This is going to allow us to connect to our Apollo client with a URI and in memory cache. I'm not really sure what that means. But we, well, I do know that I do know what I do know something that means something. My English is dying. Let's contain this in an Apollo provider, like so. Okay, Omicron, Omicron, Omicron. Client is equal to client. Do you want to find it? No. All right. And then. We need to now connect it to our virus simulator. Okay. Don't know how to do that. Let's see here. So according to ChatGPT, assuming you want to interact with the virus simulator from your Apollo server, you can use the Firebase admin SDK. Okay. But where I wonder where this goes. Let's see here. So we have Oh yeah, index. No, that's the back end. Uh Firebase, there we go. This is it. Uh, where does this go? So basically, I'm just asking, like, where the heck am I supposed to put this stuff? Oh, remember, no, I'm sorry. Never told you, dog, but I actually split all three. So now it's fit tracker, expo app, then it's fit tracker, uh, firebase, firebase stuff, then it's fit tracker backend. Also, I I uh I set my ChatGPT to give me custom instructions I'm like a bro or like a buddy, so it's a lot easier to talk. Gotcha. So if you have to see this, you want to put the Firebase admin SDK in your service and code in the Firebase. Um. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Then let's do that. So uh, what I'll do is create a new file. Let's call this index. Whoops. Create a new file. I want to make sure that everybody's seeing what I'm doing. Okay. So create a new file, call it, goddamn, what's going on? Okay. 
create a new file called index.js. So inside of the index.js, we're gonna put some stuff in there. So we have requires Firebase admin, Apollo server, uh, your Firebase project ID, and that. Okay. But wait, no, I think, no, wait. No, I think, I think there's something messed up here. Uh, let's do this. So now we are do I fix this file? How do I split it up? Yeah, let's give it that. Let's see what it gives us. Unless I'm really excited about tomorrow, we get some Taco Bell. I don't know if, uh, if anybody is in a Taco Bell or not. I'm a huge fan of it. They have this thing called like a value box, like what, 15, 15 bucks, 10 bucks or something. And um, they give you like a give you like a burrito, taco, and a quesadilla. It's freaking delicious. And also you have like a KFC like drumstick on the side. I'm trying to get fat. All right. So file structure is now like this. Source, Firebase. Mm. Is it like that? Okay, yeah, you know what, that makes sense. That does make sense, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's do it like that. So we have our Firebase backend and fit tracker Firebase like that. But what we wanna do is now we're gonna consider backend here. Let's create a new folder, call it source, and then Oh, I guess we're not actually moving anything like that. So, okay. Uh, instead of here, let's create a new file. No, instead of there, let's create several folders. Okay, source. So new folder, Firebase. And then instead of source, we create another folder called GraphQL. And then within the source, we create a new file called server.js. That's the Apollo server initialization code goes here, and then package JSON and everything. So we're gonna move our index.json file into our Firebase. Yep, I want to do that. And then to our GraphQL, we'll create an index.js file as well, and we'll leave that as that. So inside of our source Firebase index.js right here, let's do our initialization for Firebase. So paste that there, like so. We're gonna put our project ID. Actually, let's do that right now. Yeah, we wanna put our project ID now. Uh, Firebase Emulator, project ID, project ID, project ID. Where do I get the project ID? Uh, Is it just called? Hey, buddy, how's it going? Uh, okay, so I'm trying to figure out where the project ID is for this thing. Is the ID for your Firebase project, which you should be able to find in your Firebase console. Okay, what I want to do is I'm gonna do this off screen, but what I'll do is I'll create a, oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. I hope that, uh, I hope all is well with you. Uh, so let's do this. So we're gonna create an EMP file. And inside of here, we'll call it uh, Firebase underscore project underscore ID is equal to, I think it's in strings is what we gotta give it. Well, actually no. Let's do it like that. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm just uh, chilling, making a nap. Uh, I'm actually really excited about this app, like how it's turning out and everything. So far, it's coming out pretty good. We've created the, like this emulator, this Firebase emulator, where we can actually run like Firebase functions and extensions and authentication off of our own computer. 
and then um, connect to like our React Native app and everything. So, you know, things are going well. Things are things are going well. All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna go into my Firebase uh, project ID. Grab that. So I'm gonna just move this aside, paste it here, and then go back here. And then what we'll do is, I think it's called, uh, let's put it in these, dollar sign, let's do process.env.tz, what is tz? No, not tz. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this to the side, copy the name, go back. Hopefully I moved it to the side far enough, but like that, okay. Don't click that, don't click that, okay. So what I've done, is I have put the Firebase project ID in this env file right here, which is gonna get get ignored. So I'm gonna put this into my get ignore. Oh no, it's not here. It's over here. So let's do this. Let's add this to get ignore. How do I add to get ignore? There we go. I think I added to this one. No, added to this one. Oh, it's a created a brand new get ignore. Yeah, that's a lot of get ignores. Nah, we'll, we'll blah, blah. That's not what we want to show. All my other project IDs out there. Eh, that's fine. Actually, I can actually change the name. Yeah, let's change the name. Okay, so now we have our project ID and our get ignore and our EMV and everything created. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, okay. I just want to double check if uh, exposing my project ID was was going to cause any sort of issues or not. But thankfully, it didn't. Um, okay, so we have that set up there. Let's continue on with what we were doing earlier. So, so we did this first part right here, and now we're just going to go into our source slash graphql slash index slash js file. Paste this in here. So this is going to take our GQL. We're not doing anything with the GQL, it's just there. Never used. I guess we're gonna use it eventually, no idea. Um, so now inside of the source server.js file, I'm gonna probably paste this. So this is gonna require the database from Firebase, okay. It's gonna require the resolver's gonna type def from GraphQL. And it's gonna require, okay, that makes sense. And then this is what it's listening to, perfect. Okay, cool. That's a lot easier to manage, I would say. So now if I do, let's do, um, not here, let's go to our back end, which is this right here, we do clear, and let's do ls, cd into our source folder, ls again, okay, let's do node server.js. And we have run into a bug, cannot find Firebase Yeah, what is that actually? I was curious about that too. Firebase admin. Yeah, that I don't even I don't even know what the hell that is. Um. Hmm. Oh wait, it's an npm package, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just realized that. Okay. Yeah, we gotta install that bad boy. We got we gotta put that bad boy in there. So inside of my backend, cd dot dot in here. Let's do npm install Firebase admin. Right, because I was thinking, like, where, like, are we creating a file for this or something? Because if we're calling a file, there'd be like dot slash Firebase admin, but we're not creating that. So now we required it, right? Hopefully, hopefully. No, it's an unpackaged JSON. Yep, we have it. Okay, perfect. So now, if I run the server cd into my source folder, and then node server.js. Nope, type devs is not defined. Let's go here. So let's friggin' define the son of a gun, huh? Um, honestly, I'm really hungry. I'm, I'm a little lazy right now, so let's just paste the error into our chat GPT and see what it spits out. Oh, 
Oh, right, it's that thing. Where's my index.js file? I'm gonna control Z a little bit. Oh, it's not even, no, it's not this, not this, not this, not this, not this, not this. Is it this one? Nope, not that either. It has to be server.json. Nope, not that either. Whatever, okay, let's just do this. Copy and paste. Obviously, it's also gonna be asking for resolvers too. What about? Because we don't have the resolvers defined anywhere. I don't think. No, we don't. No, no, we do not. And this is this is how you can like get really addicted to coding. You want to do one thing, and then one thing works, and then you keep going and going and going. You keep riding the wave. Wave. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and copy this bad boy. So here, we've defined our type definitions, define our resolvers, server, and that. Honestly, I don't really even know what a type definition or resolver is, so let's go ahead and see what that is. What is a type def and resolver? Let's see what it spits out. I think I'll probably also stream tomorrow too, but we'll see. Um, okay. I want you to explain it to me like I'm five years old. Stop generating. Regenerate. Or oh, no, generate what I said. Explain like I'm five years old. Oh, I realize it's like half cut off. There we go. Okay, so sure, let's simplify. So imagine type definitions. Imagine you have a toy box and you tell your buddy, hey, in this box we can only put toy cars and action figures. That's what a type definition graph tool do definition graph will do they tell the system what kind of data toys we're playing with and what they should look like okay and then for our resolvers now your buddy asks can you show me a toy car you go to your toy box you pick out a toy car and show them that's a resolver it's like you're resolving to find and show the toy your buddy asked for so in this code world so in the code world type def describes what toys data looks like and resolvers are the action they can ah okay that makes sense that makes sense okay all right all right all right okay that makes sense cool perfect so now let's go ahead and rerun it bug it out and now it says oops we don't want that now we're missing this i'm assuming that we haven't connected anything properly then Wait, wait, what is this thing? Hang on. It says you'd uh, usually define a schema using type defs and resolvers. If you didn't include them, uh, Apollo server is going to be like, dude, what, what game are we playing? I need rules, man. Make sure you define the type defs and resolvers and pass them into Apollo server, like so. So, I mean, I've done that. Wait. Wait, but, like, no, that doesn't make sense. Because like over here, this is our resolver file. Why are we having two server dot listens? That doesn't make any sense. There's something wrong with these files. Hang on, let's let's also control. Oops, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. We gotta bring back our process ID and B. Um, I don't know why I left. So let's do process dot ent dot. I'm gonna move to the side a little. Oh, I don't need to move to the side because it's publicly known information. Garbage project ID, and then paste that bad boy in there like so. Okay. Yeah, so there's something wrong with one of these files here. Um, so this is one, this is the other. So it's these three files right here. Okay. Looks like we have something wrong with our files. Here's all the files. Please fix for me. Thanks. Habibi. All right, let's paste it in there. Let's take this and let's paste that in there as well, shall we? And then let's take this bad boy. Let's paste that in there too. Wait a second. Is that the thing? Is it because? Yeah, we don't even have these defined. What the? Yeah, okay. So when ChatGPT created these files, it messed up. 
it messed up it messed up okay. damn i'm getting really hungry right now and i'll eat in a bit okay so okay all right looks like you've got a bit of a code mix up you've got multiple files overlapping code this is likely causing conflicts and errors let's sort it out so First of all, let's define the structure for better organization. So we're going to consider our index.js file as the entry point where we're going to set up uh, the constructed home server. So you know what I'll do is at the top of these files because I know for a fact that I'm going to forget. Let's add a comment and just put it there like so. And then Firebase.js, this is going to be, let's not call it Firebase.js, let's call it the uh, index.js and the Firebase folder. So here, I'm going to create a new comment, add it there. And then schema.js. Wait. This is this is this one right here. And my index.js file is that. Okay. There we go. Alright. We just needed to define that. So in the firebase.js file which is our, this, this file right here, I think. What the hell's the point of this then? It says fit tracker fibers. God, I've messed up some, but really bad. Okay, hang on. What have I done wrong? Where am I going wrong? Well, first of all, let's delete this. Because I don't think we, I don't think we need that. I don't know, I, I'm, I'm gonna leave that there for now. Because I know we're messing up somewhere here. Well, I'm messing up somewhere here. I don't know why I keep saying we. Okay, so let's take this Firebase initialization. Bam, put that there. Perfect. And then our schema, which is our Apollo server, which is where we define our types and stuff. Uh, okay, so oh, this is in the GraphQL. Okay, so this is in here. Okay, so this goes here, like so. Okay, okay, and then inside of the server, which is the index file, goes that Firebase index server. Okay, now let's give it a try. Please don't die. You died. God damn it. Schema. Oh yeah. That's that's another issue. It's not schema. Um it's not schema at all. It's uh it's this thing right here. No. No. Whoa. Oh, you know what I realized? I've been editing the wrong files the entire time. God damn it. Ah. First of all, let's let's delete this, okay? Let's get rid of this file. We don't even need this. I don't even know why I have that there. Let's delete that file, okay. While that's deleting, let's re-get ChatGPT to like redo this for us because obviously we have messed up somewhere. Well, I've messed up somewhere. So it's the schema file, that's our schema, which isn't schema, it should be this crap this one okay yeah dot slash what do we get uh graphql slash index.js index okay now let's give it a try what do we get oh it works okay now let's open it up and we get studio graphql apollo okay yay it works it works good 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 so let me just quickly talk about what we did because i don't even remember what we did okay so far, we have done a lot of things, a lot, like, like a crazy amount of things. And it's an hour and 14 minutes. Okay, so basically what we did today so far is that we've set up our Firebase emulator locally. Um, basically what a Firebase emulator is, and this blew my mind when I figured it out, is that it allows you to be able to locally emulate your Firebase project so that you don't have to do anything on production or like create one like off in like some sort of data center or anything. So that's what we did here. We 
We created it with authentication, Firestore emulator, real-time database, function, storage, hosting, well, not hosting, just these five right here. Um, and then what we did was after that, we also created our Apollo GraphQL server, which is gonna be used to define what kind of data we're gonna be getting, excuse me, and exactly how much data we're gonna be needing. Now, eventually, I do want to set up React Query for caching and stuff, but I'm assuming that GraphQL does it for us, I think, but I'm not too sure. Um, okay, now, let's scroll, let's, let me scroll a lot here. So basically, now what I'm going to do is I want to continue off where we left off earlier. So we have this, okay. So we connect this there, connect that there, and then that's it, okay. Now, how do I know it's connected to my app? I'm, cu I'm curious how, like, we're gonna know exactly that it's connected to our Apollo, no, oh, sorry, to our Expo app. You'll need to make a GraphQL query, expect the data back. Okay, so we already have installed that, okay. And then set up the Apollo client. We've already set that up too, perfect. Wrap it in Apollo provider. Okay, beautiful. Hot diggity daffodil. And then like that. Uh, okay. You know, let's give that a try. Let's give this a try in our, so I'm gonna go to my app and then layout. And then what I'll do is, at the very top here, uh, I'm gonna import GQL and use query. This is just for testing purposes. I'm, I promise, I promise I'm gonna get rid of it soon. Um, or at least the next time. So what I'll do is at the top here, I'll do const hello query, okay. And then export default. Uh, I think it should be, it should be inside of here, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, and then let's see what it's saying. Cannot be even after that. Oh, um, hmm. How do you solve that? Yeah, that was pretty simple. Okay. Let's wrap it like this, wrap it like that, and then let's do that. Nope. Oh, wait. Oh, we gotta wrap it like this, wrap it like that, and that. Nope. Uh, we gotta do, give it a few. And then give it that. How about that? Uh, where am I? Okay. Can I find name view? Import it from React. Import it from React Native. Text, it's not a valid. I swear to God, it is a valid. I swear to God, bro, it is a valid one, man. Like, it is right here, yeah. Text. Text. Oh, it's from that what the hell is that fiend theme is this file for theming god this is so confusing well no not confusing okay let's do this let's control z a lot of this stuff here so we get rid of that okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into my screens here somewhere tabs index this is what we want to be at yeah okay so what I'm gonna do is inside of inside of this file right here I'm gonna import use query GQL and everything and then I will add this constraint hello query and then let's paste this bad boy into there like so please don't bug out on me please for the love of God don't bug out on me okay so it didn't bug out. Okay. Kill, 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 kill. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. My computer is like on life preservers right now. It, it's been it's been running for a while. Data hello. Okay. And then we go here. No, we go here. Okay. Now let's do expo. No, it's npx expo start. Honestly, man, I'm hoping to God. 
that this works because like uh, I'm really friggin' hungry right now, dude. I'm really hungry, but I can't stop until this works. No, you're still fire, man. You got my first coding job in two years. Fresh out. Oh man, congratulations, dude. That's huge, man. Obviously, getting your first job is the hardest thing to do, and once you're in the industry, it gets easier from there. But congratulations, man. Good for you. I'm glad that I could help you out. But uh, you did the hard work of being able to get it, man. All right, so now let's go ahead and open up into our Android emulator, which is this bad boy right here. Uh, oh, oh, mm -hmm. Let's refresh. See, that's our splash screen that we made yesterday, or last time. How are you liking your new job, by the way? Vancouver. Oh, really? Oh, that's sick, dude. Oh, right, no, I remember that comment you left. I think you said, like, uh, you got your first job off of that project or something like that. I, I don't remember. I, I think I remember correctly. That's really cool, man. Good for you, bro. Good for you. Okay, so we're getting an error here. We got to... Error network request failed. Okay. I'm getting error network request failed. Let's see what it spits out. So make sure you check the. I don't think. That's so weird. That's so weird, dude. See, what I want to do... Uh, restart everything. Okay, yeah, let's give everything a restart. It worked last time. It might work this time, too. So we're going to run the emulators again. Please work. Please run. Thank you. Okay. And then we'll run the server, and then we'll run this as well. You know what I do want to do is I should probably add, like, a constraint or something that shows, like, hey, you're actually pulling data from, um, you're actually pulling data from there. All right, I'll do that in a bit. Okay, let's reload. Uh, we're also running that there too. No, why am I not been pushing? Close this. I don't. I don't want to see no friggin' iOS. I don't want to use no friggin' iOS, man. You liked it a lot. You liked it a lot. Went there for a lot of time. Felt out of place. I moved in data analytics department. Oh, I see. I see. Data analytics. What is that all about? Like, is that like Python and stuff like that? Cause like. I've heard it's pretty complicated. Do you feel like you're more at home with data analy analytics now? Or do you still feel like you're still trying to figure out where you belong? Okay, so it's not working, still not working, but um, let's do this. Let's go into my client in here in here no not here wait no not there L layout yeah and then layout.tsx this one yeah okay this was the one so what's going on here so we have our Apollo server 4001 okay well let's actually you know let's do this Let's see if we're actually even like getting in here. So let's do console.log client and see what happens. Um, yeah, don't really care about that type error. Okay, so so we are connected to it then, I think. I think. Let's 
so cores error could it be a cores error let's try that out so inside of my server inside of cores file origin and then let's restart our server and let's reload our app Damn, this stream is actually a lot longer than I hope, was hoping for. I was thinking like it'd be like 45 minutes or some, something like that. Okay, let's try this out again. So I'm just going to ask, ask it a question again. I can still get anything in this frustrating. Yeah, it is frustrating. I'm really freaking hungry too right now. But we gotta persevere. We gotta push through it. Um Okay, you know what? Let's let's check something out here. Da 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 Close this tab. Let me close a lot of these files since we don't need a majority of them even open up. Okay. So we have our Apollo client, and then let me reload this, see what happens. So we have our Apollo client. No, that's not what I want to see. Close this file. Let's open up our. Which one was it? Was one of these two here? It was. Layout? Or was it this layout? No, no, it was the other one. Okay. God, why do I keep going back down? Okay. So inside of this layout file, we need to specify. So that's our client. So let's do this. Here's all my code. Please help. I'm very hungry. So we're gonna give it that code and then let's give it the server.js file. Let's give it the index.js file and let's give it the Firebase as well. Okay, and then just because we are also on that screen as well, I think it's this one. No, it's the bu -bu -bu -bu. this one, yeah. I literally threw it all my code and I'm hoping to God that it can like sort of give me something. I'm reaching for the goddamn stars here, man. Okay. All right, let's get you sorted. Your Apollo client, firstly, you seem to be connected to 4001. Your exploit won't work because testing on the physical device or any letter. Is expo. Okay. My computer's IP address. Now I'm a little scared to send show that on the interwebs, but how can I get my IP address? And then you know what I'll do is I will um oh yeah that's what I'll do. Instead of my fit tracker here, I'll create a new file, call it .env, and then I'm gonna add this bad boy to get ignore as well. Wait, no, we added that twice. What the hell? What the hell is happening? Oh, it created it now. Okay, nice. Add that to get ignore. Okay, and then get ignore. We should see it. No, we don't. Add to get ignore. Oh, is it this one? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to clean up these get ignores. Yeah, we're gonna have to clean up these get ignores. Okay. IP underscore address is equal to. And then. I'm gonna do this off screen uh, just to find my IP address and everything. There we go. Open new terminal and then I'm gonna run this command. And then I'm 
looking for something like this. And then it should be that. Wow, what the hell am I even seeing here? So basically, I'm seeing a whole bunch of metadata. A whole bunch of it. Let's see what it gives me. Yeah, dude, my, my computer is goddamn about to friggin' die or something now. Like, why is this simulator so open? I don't understand. I closed you, bro. Okay, so that is my new IP address. So let's copy this. Basically like that. And then I'm going to close my EMP file so nobody can see it. And then, what I'll do is go into my app, go into layout, and then here, here I will do, so the reason Expo isn't letting me work with, uh, with this stuff is because it can't find localhost at all. So let's do this, let's make these into backticks. And then here, let's do dollar sign curly braces, and then we'll give it process dot env dot oh crap what is it called hang on i gotta open it up again i gotta figure out what it's called oh yeah this is called ip address number there we go and then damn that's gonna work that's because what we'll do is we will restart the server we will restart our app. And also, um, export IP address, export this. Reload the son of a gun. Please, please, please. Please work, please. Please. Come on, man. Damn it. Okay, it didn't work. Let's try something else out again. You know what? I'm gonna try doing this. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna console log my process again. If we see if that even friggin' returns anything. Um. So here, let's do console.log that. You're welcome. Undefined. Okay. All right. So it's just returning undefined. So there's nothing. There's nothing I can do about that then. Let me let me say to my GP my PPT returns undefined. If I have to like go through like fifteen steps to just set up an ENV. I'm gonna lose my mind, dude. Use a config.js file. Config.js? Use an env file. Oh, that's what I have to do. God damn it. Ugh, crap. Okay. Yeah, I just realized what happened. So apparently with React Native, what you actually have to do is you need to install the package to have ENVs even processed. So npm i. Let's install that. Okay. And then, at the very top here, I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna move my screen to the side and just double check if it's even pointing the right area. Please work. Please work. No, that, that doesn't work. Uh, well, that's not even a thing. Let me look up online. Let's look at the documentation here. Okay. React Native ENV PM. It's called dot ENV. I'm going to kill everything, dude. <laughs> So 
so installation usage Babel RC. God damn it. It's called dot env, not env. So let's do this. Let's uninstall the previous one. So uninstall. Oh wait, no, it oh my god, I'm gonna freaking it I'm on such little sleep right now, dude. Okay, so we have the dot env there. And then what we need to do is inside of our Babel RC, Babel config, I guess. We gotta give it plugins. Oh wait a sec, since you're using expo, expo um so plugin expo env production no env environment variables and that environment variables are key value pairs config to allow that to uh, expo c level automatically load environment variables with expo public oh okay okay Okay, 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 I gotcha. I gotcha, bud. So let's get rid of that. And then, let's, so in our env file itself, we need to redefine it. So it's not gonna be called IP address, it's gonna be called expo public underscore IP address and everything. So like you see how they're using it here? And then I guess that's exactly what we have to do then. So we save that and then um, what the hell? And then uh, public IP address like that. Save that. And then go and take a nap. <laughs> Expo start. Let's get for a try. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You can do it, buddy. Oh well, it's almost an hour and a half, nice. It's funny, I, I was gonna hop on here like really quickly for like 20 minutes and be like, yeah, we're just gonna set up Firebase emulator. Shit, sure, that took like, like 45 minutes or something. You, yeah, 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 yeah. That's not what I wanna show. I don't wanna show that at all. Remind me to get rid of that, actually. I am going to get rid of that. Okay. Well, I just showed it again. God damn it. God, God damn it. Okay. Let me just refresh everything. Reload the app. And then... Okay, so we still have network request failed. Wait, is there a network? Is our API even running? Yeah, it's running, okay. And then layout.tsx. So I am getting the IP address, which is perfect now. Uh, okay, let's try it. Oh, you know what? I think I just realized something. It's not uh, a public IP address that I'm sending. Oh, God damn it. Okay. All right, we're out of ChatGPT4, so I guess we're gonna have to freehand this solution and code it with our minds. All right, let's give that a try. So, inside of my... I'm gonna 
close this tab because we don't need that. All right, here's what we have right here. We have our this thing. We don't need this thing open. We don't need that open. We don't need this open. A lot of these times we don't need it open. Public, no, it's, well, yeah, public, but it's private IP. It's not even, it's like the local one. Uh, Try. I'm gonna try something out here. Don't really know if it's gonna work or not, but might as well give it a try. See what happens. So we have client, and then inside of here, what we'll do is we'll do a console.log. This. Let's see what we get. Da, 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 da. You know what? I think this is a good as any time, good time as any to like call it a day here. I think we got a lot of things done. Yeah, what do we get done? We set up part of a simulator locally, and then we set up a backend, and then we, you know, I guess exposed our IP address a hell of a lot. <laughs> um. Yeah, so we set up our Firebase. We set up our Firebase local emulator, local emulator is what I mean. Uh, we set up our GraphQL, connected it, sort of. It still needs to connect fully. But I think we made pretty good progress. We pretty much connected whatever we wanted. So I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.